In this video, we're going to look at opening up multiple controllers to look at multiple data sets simultaneously while locking together the way we look at them in different ways. We can lock the spatial coordinates, we can lock the time coordinates, and we can also lock uh, thresholds. So here I have my terminal, and I'm in my home directory. If I type ls, I see that I'm set up for the boot camp, so I'm going to change into this directory, AFNI data 6, and actually the AFNI directory there. Okay, and if I type ls, you can see I have a lot of directory uh, files in this directory. I may have more than you do at the moment. A lot of these were created during the alignment talk, which I prepared on this computer. If you don't have some of these, that's okay. We'll still just uh, look at this functionality anyways. So I'm going to run AFNI to open up the GUI. And I'm going to close my terminal in the background just for the sake of space. And here I open up my controller and I have these control panels. And one thing that you can notice now that you may not have noticed before, but in the title bar of each one of these is a letter in square brackets, A, 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 A. Why is that? Well, if I go to this button new and open up a new controller, you'll see that this one has a B and every new image that I open up for it, sagittal, coronal, etc., has a B in it. And actually for, for space considerations here, I'm just going to, um, I'm gonna close the, the coronal one. I'm gonna open up a, a graph for later. Well, I'll come back to that later. We'll come back to that. Okay, um, but the graph would have the A and the B. So you, we can basically see which control panel goes with which image window here. And right now I have two of the same data set you see, as I click around somewhere, the coordinates are locked together spatially. If I change my underlay here, right now it's the anatomical by default, I'm going to choose this EPI R1 data set. Fine. And I'm just going to close the crosshairs there. And if I, if I click around now, I'll see that the data sets are still locked together. Okay, so these are different data sets. They're locked by XYZ coordinate, and I can see that if I look here, the XYZ coordinates, zero something something, and here it's zero and similar. Now, one thing you may be asking is, why are these numbers not the exact same as this number? Well, if I open the same data set, they would be. In this case, I have two different grids, and they have different spatial resolutions. So the grid here is approximately one by one by one isotropic, and this grid is a little bit coarser, and the centroids of each voxel are not in the exact same location. And that's really what the, this coordinate value, this single number, represents for the voxel where I've clicked, the, the centroid of it. And basically, the, the centroid of a voxel in this data set where I've clicked, the closest centroid in this data set is located here, which is, as you can see, very close to being the same uh, less than a, a voxel dimension. Okay, so they're locked together spatially or as close as they can be when they're on, they're on different grids, and that's fine. Now, um, this data set here, if I look at the underlay, it only has a single time value. It doesn't have, like this data set here is 3D plus T, and it has 152. So if we want to discuss how things are locked together in time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this anatomical data set in the underlay, and I'm going to choose it to be this EPI R1 underscore VRT. This also has 152 time points. Now, you may not have this data set because you might not have gone through the alignment talks and run the, the motion correction on this EPI R1. You could just choose this EPI R1 here. That's okay. I'm going to open up this one just because it's a little bit more interesting, but the same point about locking data sets in time will be made in either case. Okay, and because I have this data set in time, I can iterate through with the index. I'm going to also just open up a graph window of each one of these. I hit the M key to change the matrix here. It's three by three. If I hit M and then M, I get a smaller matrix with the lowercase m. Okay, now I can navigate through time in these data sets in different ways. I could hit the index button here in the A controller, 
and I see that it's changing visually, and I see here along the time series this red ball that tells me where I am in time in this data set, which is consistent with this index, is moving. In this in data set, though, in this control panel B, it's not keeping up. And so if I go here, I hit the right arrow key. If here, I hit the right arrow key, or if I click around, you see that they're not linked together at all. Okay, so these are not time locked. How can I go about doing that? Spatially, they're locked, but not in time. Well, let me go to define data mode in either controller. And here, there's a button called lock. And if I click on that, I see that there's an option for time locking, which is not selected. So I'm going to select time lock. Now, if you notice, nothing looks like it's happened. This data set here is still at index 25. This one is still at index 8. However, if I click somewhere here, now you'll see that they are, in fact, linked together at the same time. Let me make this window a little bit wider so it's a little more obvious. Here, the time index in each is 25. If I click somewhere else, you'll see that the time index now is locked together. And if, for example, I hit the V key, you'll see that they're both scrolling through in video mode, locked together, and spacebar to pause. Okay, now why is this particularly useful? Well, this data set has some interesting features here. If I click somewhere, I might see a spike like this. So let me go here, and now I'm gonna hit the V key for video mode, and watch what happens in each data set. Okay, did you see that? I'm gonna hit V again. There's, this is data set has not been motion corrected, and this one has been with 3D Volreg. If I just use the arrow keys around this feature, you'll see this is a nice way where you can see motion before uh, and after correction. So again, they're, they're time locked now. Okay, um, if I wanted to do something like turn off the spatial locking here, I could go to define data mode, lock, and if you notice here, these are all the, the spatial locks for however many controllers up to the Jth controller I have. If I click on this one now, you'll notice they're all unlocked. And if I click now in this data set, you see the crosshairs are moving. In this data set, they're not. They're no longer locked together. Okay, so if you want to unlock spatially, that's how you can do it. I'm going to go back to lock and down here select set all because I want all the controllers locked spatially. And now as I click around, I'm, I'm back to having them locked spatially. Okay, now here we've just been focusing on, on underlays. Let's take a look if we have an overlay data set. So I'm gonna go here and select overlay in the A controller. And there's a data set here called Funk Slim, which is a functional statistical data set or there's statistics in it. So I'm going to select that in the A controller. Okay. And what I'm looking at here, if I close this now and move my windows over, and let me prepare this one. Okay. I'm also going to open up in this controller. I'm going to overlay this Funk Slim. Fine. Now, um, if you notice here, they, they both have the overlay data set being brick one, and the threshold is the statistic associated with it, which we've talked about in other videos, why we look at our modeling results this way when we have both a coefficient and a statistic in our model, in this case for a visual reliable task. If I take it this threshold and I increase it, you notice that, well, spatially, these two data sets are still linked, but in terms of the threshold, they're not. Well, okay, uh, maybe I want them to be thresholded at the same level. In this case, they're, they're the same statistic, so let me just go here, and what I'll do is I'll select um, for this data set in the A controller that the overlay will be the coefficient of the audio reliable, and I'll make the threshold be the, the T stat with it. Okay, so in this case, this is a visual reliable stimulus, and this is an audio reliable stimulus from the same task. and the problem, quote unquote problem at the moment is the thresholds aren't locked together. Well, let me go to define data mode and go to lock and see what options I have. Ah, down here, I see that I can lock valve. Okay, 
So right now I'm on free threshold. Let me select this one, lock value. Okay, and again, it doesn't look like anything changed here, but let me click in this data set and move the threshold here. Now, if you notice, as I move the threshold here, the same threshold value is being applied here. Okay, so they're still locked spatially. And um, if I increase the threshold here, let me increase it more so the differences are a little more apparent. Okay, um, you can see these, these are different spatial maps. It's fairly subtle here actually because the, um, this visual reliable and audio reliable each task has an audio and a visual component. So they both are activating or both have high um, beta weight values for audio and visual tasks. So, but they're, they are different here. You can see some, some differences. Maybe if I make this the V minus A, it'll be a little bit more apparent how different they are. Okay, so again, the threshold is the same here. Now, what if I wanted to look at this data set and it's not the, um, the coefficient here the, from the model of the GLT. Let's say I wanted to display and threshold with the FSTAT. So the FSTAT's a very different type of data set than, than here. And now, if you notice, um, the thresholds are locked together, but let's look here at what the corresponding p-value is. Here, the p-value associated with this threshold for this FSTAT, which AFNI has the information for like degrees of freedom stuck into the header so it can convert these. If I threshold this FSTAT, the value of the FSTAT of 2.5 in this data set has an associated p-value for a two-sided test of 0 0.08. Okay, well actually with an FSTAT, we don't have to talk about sided, but anyways, um, p-value of 0 0.08. What is the p-value of this data set? It's 0 0.01. So while the thresholds are locked together for these two different statistics, they each have a different p-value, a different corresponding significance. Well, if I wanted to, I could ask AFNI to lock together not the, the, the threshold value, but the p-value. Okay, so let's select this. Okay, now when I change the threshold here, look at the the, the threshold value here is 4 in this data set and 2.38 in this data set. But if you look at the associated p-value, it's the same p-value that I'm thresholding at in each of these data sets. So if I want to lock together two different statistics, and it doesn't have to be from the same volume. It, in this case, it just it is because I, I have this statistic volume. But now I'm locking together the threshold by p-value. In this case, it's very small there okay so again there are different choices about how i lock together the thresholding part all right so this was locking by p value okay so those are different ways where you can lock and unlock spatially lock across uh, time here in this defined data mode you can lock in time and then you can also lock the threshold either not at all by the value of the threshold or by the associated p-value if your data set is an AFNI statistic data set that has the appropriate uh, degree of freedom and other information stuck into the header. And if I just, I'll, what I mean by that here, if I type 3D info on this data set here, through the history, associated with each statistic is a statistical code and um, other statistical parameter information. So the degrees of freedom for the, uh, the t-stat, uh, for the f-stat, it's the degrees of freedom, and you'll have to ask a statistician what this is because I'm not sure. So um, this won't work on other data sets created by other software that don't have this information stuck in here uh, to be able to convert between the statistic and the p-value, but there you go. Define data mode lock, and you can look at different ways to, to lock and unlock multiple data sets. Okay.